Hey everyone, welcome back once again to Realms Remembered. This is Michael T. Bradley. It's been a while. You might hear this horrible, shrill, shrieking noise in the background at times. That is a lovebird. Uh, we have someone temporarily living with us for a while while they're in between apartments, and uh, that lovebird is the bane of my existence, so bear with me. <laughs> and it's not, in fact, me tweeting for no reason. So it's been a while since we last talked, variety of reasons. I won't go into most of them, not really important. Main thing, however, is that I found that I had a lot of books where I would finish them and then I just didn't have much to say. I think I'm getting to that point where I'm kind of feeling burnt out again. Um, I will most likely push so that I finish off everything second edition and then come back really strong after like a few months uh, taking off and start on third. I have a lot of different stuff that I've been wanting to read and I just feel like, oh, I should read Realms and then I never actually get around to reading it because I don't really want to because I'm just, I, I don't know, I'm at this place where like I'm enjoying most of the stuff that I'm reading I'm just not feeling like wham bam about it you know so we will talk about what we have right now possibly do two episodes here and go from there the first book on our list we're gonna talk about the mage hound 1370 almost there almost I know I keep saying it almost the mage hound by Elaine Cunningham this starts the era of covers for realms that are really really like this trilogy at least as far as I know all of it takes place in or around Halrua, which is a very magic heavy place so this kind of made me think oh, I'm probably not gonna enjoy this Elaine Cunningham's always kind of hit or miss for me and I'm not a huge magic user fan then I I started it and she awesomely enough decided to set the entire series around the Jordanes who are non-magic users who kind of learn how to deal with magic in a non-magical way. So essentially they're as versed in magic as magic users, they just don't actually use magic. They're like theology majors, not necessarily believing in things, but they know the theology inside now. So yeah, this starts this frustrating trend and I, I feel like it must be me getting burnt out because normally I feel like I have something to say about books, whether I like them or not. Mage Hound is just very, I liked it. I read the entire thing. It had some really nice bits. In fact, I, uh, I bookmarked a quote I thought was especially nice. Like pigs and poets, they garnered most of their acclaim after their deaths. It's got a lot of nice little witty bits like that. Just, you're like, ah, uh, it's cute. It kind of, it, rem it reminded me a lot of Azure Bonds, that style of writing. And our two main characters I really enjoyed. She has a kind of, kind of sort of Mary Sue main female character, but this Mary Sue main female character I enjoyed. She's much more a tomboy and funny and wacky, and I enjoyed that a lot more than, what's her name, Arlen, who's just like, you know, hardcore and badass and rah rah rah. That just doesn't work for me. I don't know, I like my heroes flawed. Arlen and Driz both just don't really work for me. Speaking of which, Driss is coming up next, but let's finish this out. A decent plot. I'm actually on book two right now. Still digging it. I, I mean, it's it's the uh, the bigger mystery scenes there. Did a fair amount of skimming here, but that's just becoming, I mean, that's just kind of par for the course overall. Yeah, again, I feel bad. I, I wish I had more to say. I, I, I think that's part of the reason why I keep putting off recording, because I keep thinking, I'll come across a book that will have a concept I'll want to talk about. You know, like I, I, with Night Parade, it was like, what makes a good horror book, et cetera, et cetera. These sort of higher concepts, and I'll think of something like that, and then that'll tie a bunch of it together. And it's just not happening yet. It's somewhat ironic, because I was re-listening to older stuff the other day, and I remember when I hit uh, Avatar Trilogy, I talked about one of the things I wanted to see going forward was this feeling like a more cohesive whole. And I think that we have that now, yet now I can't find cohesive things to talk about the books with. Next book on the list, Sea of Swords, ending out the, like, 17 part. However, it kind of depends on whether you count uh, uh, Silent Blade, I think, or uh, no, A Servant in the Shard or not. Uh, 17, 16, somewhere in there, part Legend of Drizzt Saga. Sea of Swords, here's the thing. It could have been an epilogue to the book that came before it, whichever one that was. That's how much happens in it. It's like, Wolfgar decides he better go see the old, uh, the old gang again and apologize, and, um three quarters of the book is leading up to that and it's all this crap that I just don't care about leading up there. We follow a lot with lots and lots and lots of different parties. The Drizzt Caddy Bree romance kindles but it doesn't really smolder or burn. <laughs> trying to think of all the fire verbs I can there. Not really sure why. It just doesn't, it, it just, I feel like I read about 20 pages total out of the entire book and that's why I'm saying it essentially could have been an epilogue. Take those 20 pages, edit them a bit, could have been 15 pages. It's a bit of a long epilogue. It could have been two chapters at the end of the previous book. Just 
I, nothing worth mentioning happens, as far as I'm aware of. I mean, stuff happens, but I wouldn't say it's worth mentioning. So, yeah, The Legend of Drizzt Saga, after really liking some of them, ends on a uh, whimper, not a bang. Um, I just kept kind of hoping Jarlaxle and, and Trary would show up, as much as I don't like them in the main Driz stuff, but they don't. So, yeah, that ended. Speaking of things that just kind of fizzled out, Sea Devil's Eye, the end of the uh, Threat from the Sea trilogy. Very frustrating because I really, really liked book one. Then book two I thought was, eh, I mean, it, it wasn't horrible, but it, it just felt like the middle of a uh, trilogy. You know, uh, generally, second book in a trilogy is the weakest, simply because it's kind of putting everything in its place for the final part. And that's what I felt like it was doing then I guess it feels like everything was too far in place. Because essentially book three is like, like the first 60 or so percent of it is like three fights, like just pulled apart and made into multi-chapter epic things, which they did not need to be. And the young sailor stuff just gets so old. I thought once this paladin starts calling him young warrior, then, you know, things are going to get better and everything's going to be smooth sailing from here on out because now we're going to have three, <laughs> three possible things to call him, three synonyms for Jarek. And no, no, we don't. And um, Yakovas, which I forgot to mention that uh, when I talked about the first two books, love that name, Yakovas. Yakovas is... His stuff was generally the most interesting in the first two books simply because his fights were over the top and bloody and insane and I really enjoyed them and uh, he's just, he kind of reminds me of like if you play super, super evil on one of the games like, I don't know, Knights of the Old Republic things like that, you know, where you just, you're just like, oh, there's power, gonna grab it. He's uh, interesting in that sort of fashion, I thought. And then book three is just basically like him hanging out, and then almost immediately he sees Jarek, doesn't exactly fight him, but goes up against him and realizes, oh, crap, things may not be going as I planned. And then in the end he turns into a giant shark and Jarek stabs him in the eye the end. The only good thing that I liked about this was their, uh, the, the resolution to the romance subplot, I felt, was... I felt worked. It's a bit drawn out, too protracted, but that's kind of common with the series at this point. The other thing I was really frustrated by was finding out who the voices in both Jarek and the uh, Little Malenti, I can't remember her name, but I can remember Little Malenti, uh, the voices in their heads, those were both a disappointment. I won't spoil it in case you want to read it, but seriously, it, it just, eh. Uh... So yeah, that ended. Eh. Next up, a beginning of sorts, the first in the cities books that we're going to look at. I say of sorts because, well, we shouldn't be starting it yet. On my list, on my timeline that I'm using, it says it's 1370. However, if you read it, it's incredibly obvious that it's set in 1372. So we're going to talk about it now simply because I don't want to forget it even more by the time we get around to 1372. But yeah, this is very, very obviously 1372. If you look in the Forgotten Realms 3rd Edition core book, which I do uh, for some of the cities that we're in, simply to look things up, you will see that in 1370 this warlord uh, attacked the town and then left off. And that's you know, mentioned quite a few times in the core book when talking about Raven's Bluff. In the book, it's two years after those events. They mention that quite a bit, and in the end, that actually ties into the plot in a fairly large way. So, yeah, this is obviously 1372. Don't know why the list that this is on sets it in 1370. In any case, awesome book. Absolutely amazing. Richard Baker is very possibly, at this point, my favorite writer for the realms. I mean, when I say at this point, I mean this far through the read-through. I can't think of anything that we've actually read. Oh, Philip Athens. I like Philip Athens better, except he's got those Baldur's Gate on his, on his side. So, um, yeah, Phil, I'm keeping an eye on you. You're on my short list. Baker, however, uh, just knocks it out of the park again, just like he did with Shadowstone. I mean, as many of the problems that I had with Shadowstone, I really, really enjoyed it. And in this one, you know, one of my main problems with Shadowstone, and I, I honestly don't think it's a problem, but one of, one of the weaknesses of Shadowstone, let's put it that way, one of the weaknesses of Shadowstone was that the dialogue was not very crisp. This, however, the main character is a kind of I don't know, Han Solo-ish type. I mean, that's not the best way to put it, but it's pretty, I think it's fairly on the nose. You know, someone who lives by their words, essentially. And every time that he speaks, it is absolutely enjoyable. The only weakness, and I wouldn't consider it a weakness, I would consider it just, I don't know, a charming peccadillo, if you will, of this book, is simply that it is meant to be, I think, in many ways, a gazetteer. So a lot of times you'll get like, he walked down 
you know, to Pearl Street and took a left on Red Blood Lane and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, unless I have a detailed map to refer to and I'm maybe planning on playing a game here, I don't remember where anything is. You know, in... <laughs> In the um, Alizan books, I remember uh, th there are certain places where by now I think I could probably make my way through them if I live there because they've played into like three parts in three different books really heavily, like the kind of setup of everything has. In, in these kind of books, I understand he was probably told, you know, put lots and lots of description of the streets and things like that in there. So what's he going to do, right? He kind of has to do that. I get it. I totally get it. But it's a little silly. <laughs> But yeah, just absolutely excellent book. Fun, fast-paced read. Really fast-paced. There's a lot in here about being a sorcerer as well, which I love because, you know, sorcery was one of those things that rules-wise never really made any sense. It was very much, to me, it felt like you want to play a magic user, but you find all the silly ingredients and things like that, time-consuming and pointless, now you can be a sorcerer, which is totally fine by me, because I totally agree. Don't really understand why we needed more than psionic, though. I, I thought psionicist was basically invented for the same reason, but whatever. Point being, saying that sorcerers exist in the world is a little difficult. I mean, it's not as difficult as some of the changes that are going to come with 4th edition, but it's a little difficult to kind of shoehorn into the world. The main character is a sorcerer, and at a few points he talks about how basically he just assumes that wizards do it all for show, that they are completely and totally making crap up, that there's no need for all these ingredients, etc., etc., etc. It's just a, a ruse to make people pay more for their services because he can do the same things without having to rely on all that, so obviously they can too. I thought that was such a great way to kind of hand wave over that sort of idea in an amusing way. Also, you have to read this simply for the scene where he impersonates a wizard to become part of the Mage's Guild. Brilliant. Just a really, really great read from beginning to end. Beyond the High Road, I remember I tried to read years ago because it's Troy Denning, and I had tried to read Cormier, a novel. Just couldn't make it through that, but I thought, oh, this is part two, and it's Denning. I like Denning. I made it like 30 pages. I remember there's a guy who like goes under a tree and meets somebody, and I, I don't know how that turns out, but it just did not work for me. Just slow, clunky. The Cormierian stuff is really difficult for me, and there's got to be some sort of fun, fun, fun hook. Didn't find it here. Not sure what happened. I think I'm going to go ahead and stop it here. I might have enough for another episode. I'm not exactly sure. We'll see. Uh, probably won't be coming out immediately, but who knows? Some days I go crazy. But yeah, as you can probably tell, my heart just doesn't seem to be that far into it right now. And I'm sure you all understand things can get frustrating at times. And I really want to give this project the time and attention it deserves. Thank you all for listening and thank you all for sticking with me. That's it for today. I will see you next time. Thank you all for listening and commenting so, so much. Have a good day. Realms Remembered.